Now I'm usually not that guy to buy something just because it was in a TV show or a movie, but this Glock 19, it's a little bit different for me. What makes this one special is that it was crafted by the sport bra wear and gun bunnies over at Terran Tactical. All jokes aside, yes, it is a piece from Terran. Now the name Terran Butler will either make you cringe or it'll make you break out your wallet and toss your hard earned money at yet another gun. This one comes from one of my favorite shows, The Terminal List. You might have read the book by Jack Carr or have even seen the show on Amazon. If you haven't, I suggest you check it out. Chris Pratt did a great job in the show as James Reese and his gun handling skills were pretty impressive for a guy coming from Hollywood. Just like the guns in John Wick and many other movies, this 19 was put together for the show by Taron Butler. You know, for the most part, it's a fairly simple Glock build with a couple extra parts that I tossed in. It's not as flashy as his Combat Masters, but I think that's what kind of drew me into it. Simple yet effective. Before we dive in, I have to give my regular thank you to Black Dot Ammo for sponsoring the channel. Black Dot provides the majority of ammo that you see in my videos. They offer match quality ammo at an affordable price. If you want to stock up, head over to their website and use discount code 715 tactical at checkout to save some money on your order. Let's dive in. I'm a Glock guy at heart. I've been shooting them for years and quite simply, they just work for me. With some slight modifications that is. The standard out of the box Glock, well it's a red headed stepchild at best. No thanks to the lacking grip texture, horrible grip angle, and that trigger that creeps like the next door neighbor we all wish we didn't have. Besides that, it's probably one of the most reliable handguns out there. Now let's take a closer look at this thing. First off, it came with a $1500 price tag, and that was before the addition of the Radiant Guardian and Afterburner. I know, that's a whole shit ton of money to throw at a Glock, but if you pick up a stock one and start doing the exact modifications to it, it starts to equal out. This is a Gen 5 19 MOS, the perfect carry gun in my opinion and I've actually been carrying this thing since I bought it a few months back. To start off, Terran Tactical did a full wrap stipple on the frame, added textured accelerator cuts, a single undercut, and also reduced the profile of the back strap. This is a very aggressive micro dot texture, and I love it. I'm a fan of the really sticky and gritty textures. Having that gun lock into your hand and knowing it's not gonna move, you know that's very appealing to me. I also like the accelerator cuts. Some people call them gas pedals or shooter's ledge, but it's designed so you can apply downward pressure with your thumb while shooting, which helps reduce recoil and keeps you shooting flatter. Whenever I get framework done, I usually opt in for these. Undercuts are another great option, and I really wish this thing would have come with double undercuts. This is just a single in the trigger guard, but allows you to get a slightly higher purchase on the gun. Now, one of the biggest improvements for me is the profile or backstrap reduction. Glocks are pretty lumpy in the back end and don't agree with a lot of people's preference. The team at TTI slimmed down the rear profile of the frame and it makes a huge difference when holding this thing. I've had this done by other companies on other Glocks, but I do have to say this is the best feeling one that I've had. I can sink my hand into this thing and it gives just a more natural feeling. Now we all know that Glock triggers, yeah they pretty much suck. Chunky, gritty, creepy, and just not that pleasant. This trigger system has been reworked by Terran and it's how every striker fired gun should feel. The first time I pulled the trigger on this thing, I was kinda taken back. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it actually is. It's smooth, and I mean smooth with no hesitation, all the way to the wall. The light and brake also caught me by surprise, and yeah, of course, you get a very short positive reset. This is done by polishing the trigger components and also switching out the internal springs. I'm pretty sure this has this Combat Master trigger kit in it, and to say the least, it's an extremely great upgrade over the stock trigger. The stock trigger can be anywhere from 5 to 6.5 pounds, and I think this one breaks right around 3 to 3.5 pounds. With this package, TTI also included their carry magwell and two magazine extensions. These are plus twos, so instead of 15 rounds, you're getting 17 rounds per magazine. 
I've bought numerous TTI MEG extensions in the past, and I really like these things. Not just for the added capacity, but the little extra weight will make sure your MEGs drop freely. Now, nothing crazy has been done to the slide machining wise, besides the laser engraved TTI logo. I usually don't care for the big flashy logos on guns, but you know this one's very subtle, it's kind of a nice touch. When it comes to the extra parts that I added, I decided to run the Radiant Guardian and the Ramjet Afterburner combo. Now the Guardian's pretty cool. It's a very robust mounting system for the RMR on the MOS system. Glock's MOS system sucks in every single way. It's definitely not the most ideal way to mount a red dot, but the Radiant is very secure and it also adds some protection to the front of the optic. It has a built-in rear sight, giving you that irons forward option. Running your rear iron in front of the optic, it frees up the rear of the slide and it makes it just a little bit easier to lock onto your red dot. Think of it as less clutter. I think Radian did a great job with this thing. The front sight also comes with the Guardian package and it gives you a lower one-third co-witness with your dot. Sweet little setup. Now I've always had the mindset of not running a compensator on a carry gun. Until I had the chance to test the Radian afterburner. This thing is hands down badass. It comes with the barrel and will run you about 385 bucks. It brings the overall length of the Glock 19 to about the length of a Glock 17. Still fits in my QVO holster just fine and it really performs well. I know 9mm doesn't have a ton of recoil to begin with, blah blah blah, but why not take every advantage that you can get? Comps work great, but they haven't always been the most reliable. They would often cause stove piping issues and you would have to swap the different weight springs depending on the ammunition that you were using. The Radiant setup, it's worked flawless with every type of ammo I've used with it. Not to mention, it really tames those hotter loads which you see with self-defense ammo. Now the comp is attached to the barrel by a tapered pin instead of the traditional way by threading onto the barrel. So if you're in a commie state that doesn't allow the threaded barrels, hey, problem solved. Get yourself the Radiant kit, it's well worth the price. So at the end of the day, is the $1,500 price tag worth it? Well, I think if you have the intentions of buying a Glock and doing the modifications to it, I'd say hell yeah, it's worth it. You're getting everything done right out of the box. I might not agree with everything Taron Butler does, but I like the way he works over a Glock. Now, this gun had everything I was looking for, and I've been extremely happy with it. It is a very pleasant gun to shoot. I love carrying it, it's comfortable. If you find a TTI in stock somewhere, I would say go for it. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this episode or simply enjoy the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.